Hello scientists, it's Pia Science here again, and this week we're going to learn about plant structures and something called tropisms. We'll explore how plants, just like animals, have structures that help them grow and survive and reproduce. In particular, we're going to look at something called xylem and phloem, and then we'll set up a few experiments so we can make some observations. Are you ready to do some science? So, here's the thing, scientists. Have you ever seen a plant skeleton? You know how at Halloween you see those skeleton decorations all around? Do plants have a skeleton? Well, how do plants stand up? What is that structure called? What is that structure that helps them grow from the ground and then up toward the sun? That particular structure is called a stem, and would you say that a stem is an internal or an external structure? Just like animals, plants have internal and external structures that help them survive too. Today we're going to look at a plant that you're probably pretty familiar with, celery, and we're going to dissect a celery stalk so that we can look inside and identify the structures that are called xylem and phloem and we'll set up an experiment so that we can observe what these structures do. Now with this kind of celery, when you get it at the grocery store, they cut off the roots at the bottom, but if I zoom in, you can see where the roots used to be, and you can even see some of these inner leaves that are growing up. You've learned a little bit about photosynthesis. I want you to make a hypothesis. Why are the inside leaves more yellow, and then the leaves at the top dark. I don't know about you, but I don't like the smell of celery. Once you get it on your hands, it takes a long time for the smell to fade away. But we do what we have to do for science. So have you ever thought about what makes the plant stand up, or why plants grow upwards, right? The stems grow up, and the roots grow down into the soil. Just like with animals, there are structures in plants that tell them which way to grow. Lots of times, some things that we are really familiar with have a lot more going on than we thought. So today we're going to take a piece of celery and we're going to dissect it to see what's going on inside. First, I'm going to take the stalk and snap it in half. Are you familiar with those little strings? I'm going to cut the end off of one of the stalks and see those little green dots. What are those? Once I've located those little green dots, then I'm going to continue to peel those strings of celery down the stalk. And while I'm doing that, I'm wondering what could their function be? Let's find the ends of those strings again, those little green dots, and peel some more of those strings down. And since they run the length up and down the stalk, what do you think their function is? Those little strings are actually bundles of xylem and phloem tissue. They're like little straws that transport water and minerals and other nutrients throughout the parts of the plant. Xylem moves water and minerals from the roots to the leaves, and phloem moves the nutrients created through photosynthesis down from the leaves to the other parts of the plant. I'm going to peel off one of the stems, and then I'm going to trim it a little bit at the bottom and again at the top. Now once I've trimmed off both of the ends, I'm going to take the stalk of celery and I'm going to put it into a jar that has water with food coloring in it. The darker the color, the better. Think, scientists, why might it be helpful to trim off the end before I put it into the water? Now, once the stem is in the water, I'm just gonna leave it overnight, and by morning, you should be able to observe something pretty interesting at the top of the stem. Let's take a look at what the cross-section will look like. How would you explain that you can see the food coloring at the top of the celery stalk? Remember, the structures that we're looking at are xylem and phloem, and one 
draws nutrients and minerals and water up through the stem and out into the leaves throughout the plant. The other structure takes the food and the nutrients created through photosynthesis and sends it down through the leaves and the stem and down toward the roots. Which one is xylem and which one is phloem, do you remember? Now, of course, if you set up this experiment, I want you to draw what you see, and certainly you should dissect the celery again. Go ahead and cut it in half again, take it apart, pull the strings apart, and record your observations in your notebook. Next, we're going to look at something called tropisms in plants, and tropisms are responses to stimuli, like growing and reaching toward a light source. Phototropism is a plant's response to light, so that if, for example, a plant is on a windowsill or a sunflower is in a field, they will grow and move toward the source of light. Another tropism of plants is called gravitropism. What do you think gravitropism is? Take a look at the pictures. Gravitropism is plant growth in response to the force of gravity. And another tropism is called thigmotropism, and that's the response of plants to touch. Think of a sensitive plant, a tickle plant. The leaves will actually fold up when you touch it, and a Venus flytrap will close over an insect that has landed on its sticky inner leaves. And many plants that climb or vines will reach for a structure so that they can twine around it and pull themselves up. You know what time it is, scientists. It's that time for one more thing. Let's set up an investigation where we can observe phototropism in a plant. And basically what you're going to do is you're going to build a maze for the plant to grow through and up toward the source of light. So we're going to take any kind of a cardboard box that you have, anything that you can recycle, and a plant. You can use one that you already have, or if you feel really ambitious, you can try to grow something from seeds, either sprouts or bean plant, something basic and easy to grow. And what you're going to do is you're going to cut a hole in the top of the cardboard box, and then on the inside, you're gonna create a little maze. And when you set the plant at the bottom, the plant will exhibit phototropism. Let me show you a few pictures and then you can get started. scientists. I'll see you the next time. Okay scientists, thanks for watching. Did you enjoy that lesson? Subscribe below to see more fun science videos. You can also become a member of PS Science on Patreon to support what we're doing. See you next time.